Hi everybody, welcome to another video on the channel. Thank you for joining me. I haven't put much out uh, in the last few months, but um, I've definitely got something to share with you today. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about competency rubrics. Um, for those of you that uh, are following on the blog, uh, I have an article on the blog uh, called Moving Away from 2K ERG Test Times Towards Competency-Based Feedback. Uh, and, and essentially, I'll let you read the blog. I'll link to it uh, in the comments below. But essentially, what it is is an account of um, some professional development I did at school uh, concerning competencies and competency rubrics and really breaking down disciplines into sort of skills that further break down into sub skills. And the gist of the article is you know, a lot of the times as coaches, we're looking at so 2K times, and you know we have an idea in our head about what it takes to make an athlete uh, successful. Um, but sometimes, you know, it's it's clear in our head what we're looking for in an, in an athlete or a team of athletes. But creating that transparency around what that looks like, uh, you know, can be challenging. So I wrote this article uh, about. You know, my experiences in my computer science class kind of coming up with uh, a set of competencies for, you know, some students who were sophomores and freshmen who were learning coding for the first time. And then I then I apply it to what it might look like in the coaching context and, and, and how that might be. Uh, and um, I've got a rubric here that, that sort of goes through, you know, what what that might look like. So here's here's the rubric uh, and it's an inch of programming. So basically these these competency rubrics um, essentially uh, operate on, you know, what is the major competency and then breaking these competencies down into sub competencies that further break down into statements that basically show different levels of um, uh, of, of you know, how good are you at doing that sort of core skill, right? So I've taken it a step further here uh, with some programming that I've written that, that is gonna help me uh, basically uh, you know, keep these rubrics, generate them. I find it very difficult to uh, use Excel and Word because the formatting doesn't tend to work out pretty well. So I wanted to show you some of this application uh, you know, this is just personal use right now. I might make this uh, technology, you know, more public uh, if there's an interest in it. Um, but I do think it's helpful, this, this idea of taking a competency and breaking it down into core skills and then further breaking that down. I think what we're trying to establish uh, in the coaching world is some transparency within within our uh, athletic cultures about what are we really looking for, and that so that you know our kids or students can really understand you know how do I get to an advanced level when it comes to nutrition or or rest or stress management or the way I approach training or lifting or or any of those things that kind of break in break break down into things you know if we go back to the article there's this graphic here uh, that I've put together that you know essentially when we're looking at training holistically we're breaking things down into you know lots of different lots of different uh, disciplines that kind of come together to make cultures work make athletes successful and you know this graphic was something that you know thought would be helpful for for us to understand how we're developing coaches so let's take a look at this app that i've developed um, essentially i've got a few rubrics in here already um, one of the ones i'm going to show you is our grow tulsa competency rubric it's a rowing stem program that we started here in Tulsa. So if I click edit here, you're gonna be able to see uh, this rubric. Now, I'm just beginning this rubric. I think there's probably more to do, but basically what this, this app that I've built will do is allow you to create uh, competency rubrics from scratch and, and basically build them, okay? And so this rubric breaks down into things like teamwork and collaboration. Um, 
experimental design. So in the course of the program, the kids are learning math and science concepts using rowing data. Uh, and so we're looking at, you know, various things like at a, at a beginning level, what are we expecting them to be able to do? And that's, you know, define and articulate what a hypothesis is uh, at, a, at a higher level of understanding uh, design simple experiments like does the length of my stroke affect how much power I can put in those kinds of things. You can collect that data from the concept two using the rowing stem app. And the gist of it is that you can build these rubrics, you know, from from the ground up. Um, you know, if you wanted to um, essentially reorder things, you can click and drag and, and make that the top one. So you can really, you know, do whatever you want in terms of reorganizing things. Um, the concept to care, uh, maintenance, those kinds of things, you know, can I, can I put the machine together? Can I set my foot stretcher at the right height? Can I put the handle back safely? Because uh, kids often let go of the handle. Um, can I clean the machine? Can I can I use the PM monitor to set up a training uh, session or something like that? So if you're if you're looking at these different things, you know, can I program a interval workout on the PM five? Might be a more advanced skill that you would expect a middle schooler to be able to do. Can I access the force curve? Do I know what a good force curve looks like? Uh, can I make adjustments to improve the force curve is more of an advanced skill. So, you know, what we've got here is, you know, we can we can edit any of these things here so I can program interval workouts on the PM5 monitor. Um, let's put a period after that, uh, submit that, and, and there there's that edit. So I can edit any of these things. I could delete these things. Uh, and and really just kind of control, uh, you know what the what the rubric is doing, um, and so um, you know ultimately the way this works is you can see if you can if you build these competent competency rubrics, um, you can you start compiling a list of these different things, um, and you know you might have one rubric for. Uh, you know, a novice athlete, you might have one for a varsity athlete, you might just have a general one for your team as you're, as you're really thinking through, like, how do you want your team to operate? Like, you, you, you know, you're training them, you, they show up to practice. Uh, what's the expectation? Like, what are you looking for? You're looking for an athlete that kind of just shows up and waits for you to start the practice or are you looking for athletes that are trained to show up at the boathouse and get the oars down and those types of things like you know presumably you're training those things in and you're making them you know making those things your vision for how the team is going to operate and 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 so the discipline is like breaking down your coaching or your teaching and really deconstructing it into what am i really looking for like and then and then think about a season think about a year of training like what am i expecting my team to be able to do in may when we get to our major championships or nationals in june or whenever that is like what am i expecting them to do and then break those things down into skills and competencies and then think about well what processes do i have to create in my coaching environment that allow those competencies to be developed right and 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 so you're being very intentional about your curriculum as a coach or an educator and and then what what you've got here is uh you know here's a, a chemistry rubric for example so i can click on that and what you've got here is is something to show the the students that you're working with like this is this is what i'm expecting to have happen um, if, if you, uh, you know, if you're at a, a mastering level when it comes to like naming chemical compounds, I'm a chemistry teacher, uh, you know, in my, in, uh, in my day job and I'm a coach after school kind of thing. Um, so we're just looking to break these things down. I mean, if I wanted to add another, I can statement, I could, I could add that in, I can, uh, you know, I won't put one in there right now. Uh, and there it is right there uh, at the bottom. So we're building these different things uh, as we go. And so what I thought would be helpful if, you know, I, if I start to build these rubrics, then what if I have a project at school? So now I'm sort of putting my educator hat on. What if I have a project at school 
that is a tech class and I want to give the kids the freedom uh, in order to um, in order to uh, do a project that they want to do. So we could have various things like blogging and graphic design, for example. That could be one project. We could have an augmented reality um, app that they're building, or we could do robotics or physical computing, something like that. And we could go in three different directions. And so what you can do with this program is you can make a custom rubric here and I'm just going to make one here and I'm just going to call it a sample custom rubric and I'm submit that and I'm, yep, I really want to create that and there it is showing up and now I can go and edit here and what I've got here in this drop down are all of the different uh, skills in all of the rubrics. So these are not rubrics in themselves. These are the lines and the rows in that rubric. And, um, you know, so for example, you know, if I'm, if I'm doing some design planning or something like that um, in this project, I might click design planning and add that to the rubric. And there is my design planning. So think about this, you know, in terms of, um, you know, coaching, if you like, you know, what are you, what are you looking to do? What are you working on? Is it technical, you know, this, that, and the other, whatever, whatever it is you're trying to do. And then what I can do is I can say, okay, um, let's say in that uh, project, let's say it's a data science project. Um, and, uh, you know, I want to do some data collection here. So I can collect, uh, you know, click data collection and I can add that. And there's data collection in the rubric as well right so what i can do effectively is build a custom rubric uh, for uh, my students my athletes you know whatever it is i want to try to do uh, and i can take the various companies that i'm looking at and put it you know and build it like that now if i want to print this off i can click print this rubric right here and there's my rubric uh, printed off there uh, so that's that's kind of handy as well. Um, so um, you know that's that's basically what we're doing. Um, if I wanted to search by rubric here, um, then um, you know I can I can put in coding or you know something, and then I, it will bring up those rubrics for me to to look at. And if I want to go ahead and, and and view that, so the Grow Tulsa rubric, I can. I can look at that and that this is uneditable. You would just, you, you would just, you know, allow somebody else to look at this uh, in your project and that, and that could be um, quite handy as well. So the third part of this um, is, is, is scheduling classroom visits, right? So think about how it could be used in a school environment. Um, we could go up here and schedule a classroom visit uh, and this is this is really an idea that I've had um, that that came from um, a conference I went to, Learning in the Brain. It was in Boston. This is a gentleman called Mark Barnes, who's done a lot of these hack learning books, and he came up with this idea of a pineapple chart. Well, a pineapple chart basically is just another word for a chart that you could put up in the faculty lounge that says. You know, at this time on this day, I'm opening my door, you know, to my classroom for other educators to come in and visit my classroom. And this is an unofficial visit. Um, it's not a formal visit. There's no report. It's very informal, but you're just going in there to look at um, uh, somebody else's class. And let's say, for example, the, you know that that would that occur. That's going to occur on Monday. So I'm recording this on Friday the 16th. So what I can do here is click on this, and I can add a class visit opportunity, and um, you know come visit AP Chemistry, for example, right? So I can put come visit AP Chemistry in here, and you know we're, we we could be doing redox reactions, right, or something like that. And uh, if I want to include a rubric, I could include the, you know, the chemistry one competency rubric, um, which isn't to do with redox reactions, but you kind of get the idea. And I can hit that and add that to 
the, cl the the calendar and then everybody would be able to see that you know on on um, that particular day um, I am opening my classroom and come visit uh, and then if, if if that person clicked on the visit opportunity and wanted to see the rubric that I was using and the competencies that I was doing in that lesson I could click on that and there's there's that rubric uh, for you to look at right so you know if you're thinking about um, you know, using this in an educational setting, that's, that's the thinking um, of all this. So I think this is universal. I think this is something that would be pretty helpful in a coaching environment, something that's helpful, certainly in a classroom environment or, you know, or, or whatever definition of classroom uh, that you want. This, this uh, learning occurs everywhere, not just in the classroom. So, um, you know, it just really depends what you're trying to do. Um, if you think this is cool, uh, give me a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel. Leave me a note in the comments. Let me know that you know you think I'm onto something here. Uh, I might be able to you know publish this on a public website uh, in the not too distant future and kind of make it available to people uh, who want to get into this uh, kind of thing. Um, again, I, I would go back and, and, and read the article about competency rubrics on my website. Um, and uh, you know, get a little bit more f idea about what these rubrics are. But this, 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 this has fundamentally changed the way I think about my discipline as a coach, uh, my discipline as an educator. And I had a lot of fun, uh, kind of building this rubric and you know, making it come alive. So, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you can apply this kind of thinking to your coaching, or if you're a classroom teacher, it's helpful. Uh, I'm always here for questions and uh, just kind of looking forward to kind of building on this and, uh, you know, thinking about coaching pedagogy, educational pedagogy uh, as best I can. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this, please uh, like the video. Like I said, share it with somebody else who you think might benefit from it. And, and I'll see you on the, way, the next one. Thanks for watching.